Why is physical activity so important to us diabetics? Can physical activity and exercise help speed up the rate of remission for a type 2 diabetic and at the same time prevent what's known as double diabetes in a type 1 or a type 1.5 insulin dependent diabetic such as myself? In order to answer these questions, we need to know what causes diabetes in the first place. And second, and most importantly, understand why each one of us diabetics are completely different and unique to one another. Treatments have to be individually tailored as you will find out why. One size does not fit all in the world of diabetes. But before we begin, let me welcome all you resilient diabetics out there. This is the channel we turn ordinary, struggling diabetics into extraordinary, well-controlled diabetics. If you don't know who I am and you are brand new to this channel, I welcome you. My name is Jay Sampat and I am an insulin-dependent diabetic diagnosed a little over six years ago. So the proud owner of a pancreas that has gone on a permanent and lifelong vacation. So not only am I diabetic just like you, where we will be walking that walk and talking that talk, but I do also have a Bachelor of Science degree in nutrition dietetics, and that does come in very handy in discussing all the intricacies of being a diabetic. My goal is to put four years of chemistry, biochemistry, organic chemistry, and human physiology into around a 10 minute or so presentation so that you know how your diabetic body works better than, dare I say your doctor, I just did. The unique information presented today will only be found here on The Resilient Diabetic. New, life-changing episodes are released generally weekly. So if you want to learn more and you want to be notified by YouTube that a new video has been published, then the only way to do that is to hit that subscribe button first, followed by the gray notification bell. Then choose turn on all notifications. And of course, if you enjoyed and learned a lot today, please hit that like button. The latest research is now suggesting that the sedentary lifestyle, which is prevalent throughout modern society, has become more deadly than smoking. In 2015, 30.3 million Americans had diabetes. In 2015, 84.1 million Americans aged 18 and over also had prediabetes. What about the cost? Total cost of diagnosed diabetes in the United States in 2017 was $327 billion. $237 billion was for direct medical costs. And at the rate that we're going, we already know it's going to get worse. Research suggests that as of today, one out of every three adults have prediabetes. And of this group, Nine out of 10 of them don't even know they have it yet. What are one of the major reasons why? You will undeniably know that answer today. So to begin with, we have to first rewind and understand how the human body was fueled and fed prior to the 1900s. One must understand the human body was first designed to move. It is built hardwired into our DNA. We moved and were in motion all day long. That physical activity was expanded to gain and acquire one thing, our food. So basically, one ate accordingly to fuel the body for the whole day. Past generations had to hunt and to gather, or in modern society, they actually walked. They walked home, they walked to work, they tendered the farm, they had to work throughout the day without any of the modern comforts. Physical manual labor has been the cornerstone for humankind from day one. From the second one got up from bed until they went to sleep, guess what? They were in motion. Prior generations did not get up, eat a bowl of oatmeal, carbs, bread, carbs, milk, carbs, juice, carbs, get into the car, drive to work, take the elevator up, only then to eat more carbohydrate snacks and drinks. Sit in front of the computer for a few hours, get in the car and have some lunch somewhere. Then eat some more carbohydrates, like a sandwich with chips, carbs, another drink, carbs. Eat some more snacks, carbs. And then drive home and have a heavy dinner, a carb-laden dinner. Sit on the couch and then possibly binge fest a little Netflix 
while eating another carbohydrate-based dessert. So the diabetic experts out there scare me, and they scare me for two reasons. One, they still promote the excessive consumption of carbohydrates, even the healthy ones in a society that is no longer in motion or is physically active. And if you have not noticed, that includes our children too. Two, the experts who do promote a lower carbohydrate intake, but ignore the other factor, our hardwired DNA that needs to move and to be physically active. So essentially, what is the body to do with all that extra carbohydrates coming in day after day when our body's fuel stores are full because there's no physical activity? And does it matter if those carbohydrates are healthy like whole grains if one is not using it for direct energy? And this is where the lesson on diabetes begins regardless of type. Once carbohydrates are consumed in excess, and it doesn't really matter if it comes from a can of soda or a bowl of rice or even whole grain breads, the body now has to find a place to store it because it's not being used due to inactivity. The latest research has finally showed us why some become diabetic and others do not. In humans, it is our skeletal muscles that are the major site of glucose uptake after one has eaten a meal. So what is happening in the muscles of a type 2 diabetic? This defect is an extraordinary high amount of fats, also known as triglycerides, are produced by our body's liver as a result of a high carbohydrate intake. Let me repeat this very important point. These fats are not coming from the fats we eat. They are actually coming from the excessive carbs that are being converted to fats by our own livers. These fats are then stored in the muscle tissue and to a high degree the liver instead of fats as reserves underneath the skin. So this is one of the reasons why many new diabetics who are newly diagnosed do not fit the bill of what most think of as a diabetic. They look very normal. They're not overly obese to any degree. This is again because over time the excessive carbs and a high fat intake at the same time have created this metabolic disorder. Diabetics are not storing the excessive surplus of carbs underneath the skin as fat, but this fat is getting stuffed everywhere else where it's slowly starting to kill and destroy the body from the inside out. The muscle tissue of a diabetic is so heavily laden with fats, it no longer has the ability to bring in glucose to store its energy because it's full of fat. So the glucose that was just consumed in a meal then remains floating around in the blood. This in turn causes the body to produce more insulin as it becomes exponentially worthless over time. This then creates a vicious circle where our muscle tissues do not respond to insulin anymore, thus the pancreas then produces more and more insulin because blood sugars are rising. Thus, the muscles then become more and more resistant. Do you see that circle of death? So if one is a type 2 diabetic, the ultimate goal would be remission. Diabetic remission means that your blood sugar levels are healthy without needing to take any diabetic medications. In my case, the diabetes came from a severe gluten allergy attack. This is where my own immune system attacked both the inflammatory invaders and at the same time ended up destroying my own pancreatic beta cells. So if one is a type 1 or a 1.5 LADA diabetic such as myself, where we do have to take insulin for the rest of our lives, then what we want to avoid is what's known as double diabetes. Double diabetes was first coined in 1991 based on the observation that patients with type 1 diabetics who had a family history of type 2 diabetes were more than likely to be overweight. Second, they rarely achieve adequate glycemic control even with higher insulin doses. The stronger the family history of type 2 diabetes, the higher the doses the patients required. And this is what I am personally most afraid of. And if you've watched my very, very first episode, LADA Diabetics, My Symptoms, Science, and Story, I explain the uphill battles I faced as a young teenager. I was actually fatter than most, and I could not understand why. So I knew already, long time ago, that carbs were either my best friend or my enemy at the very same time. When I was first diagnosed, or should I say heavily misdiagnosed, I retried the established recommendations of a high carbohydrate intake, but the healthiest of choices, carbs like oatmeal, 
carbs, my nutrition dietetics program taught me to directly treat diabetic patients. But surprise to surprise, I then started to develop double diabetes. And at the same time, that diet made glucose control very, very difficult. It actually turned out to be an absolute disaster. I was starting to require more and more insulin. Thus, insulin resistance became present even though I was still very active and working out six days a week. So my first very important point I want to make is that even with a solid physical activity in place, that was not powerful enough to unwind the destruction, the excessive carbohydrates, thus insulin requirements were doing to my body. This is why diabetes is coined the disease of the diet. It always begins and ends with knowing carbohydrates can be our worst enemies. And this is why this all important channel on diabetes exists. You now know what carbs can heal us and what carbs are to be limited. And if you've been following me and are subscribed, that list of damaging carbs, our blind healthcare experts are recommending have been and will be exposed one at a time. And I will set up an important playlist in the description box and at the end of this video to that all important link. So to recap, what have we just learned so we can take this a step further? What makes us diabetics all unique from one another? Why one size does not fit all? Well, first of all, each one of us have different pancreatic functionings, meaning we all have varying amounts of insulin production from not at all to 100% functioning. Remember, in type 2 diabetes, years of pancreatic beta cells having to pump out ever increasing higher and higher amounts of insulin then just begins its own demise. It just gets tired and worn out. But another important point to factor in is that this all occurs years, sometimes decades, prior to being diagnosed. So by the time of diagnosis, 50% of beta cell function may have already been lost for many diabetics. Two, we all have different resistant levels. Some have massive amounts of those triglycerides ingrained throughout their muscles, the liver, and in and around the body organs in different amounts. Some don't have any resistance at all. They only have tired and worn out pancreas. Once diagnosed, some go through what's known as a honeymoon phase. When a person first receives a diagnosis of diabetes, some of their insulin producing beta cells are still functioning and producing insulin like we just discussed. This honeymoon phase may last a few weeks to several months to even a few years, but it will eventually end for some diabetics as it never recovers. After a while, the remaining insulin producing cells will stop working. As a person monitors their blood sugars, they will notice levels rising regardless of the carbohydrate intake. The need for exogenous insulin will then be required for a subset of diabetics. So if one is in the honeymoon phase, and they're still eating excessive carbs, even the good carbs. They are just quickening the pace in which the pancreas will completely fail. Think of it like a car engine. If a car engine has mechanical problems, your engine light is on, you're not gonna go and enter that car into a race and redline that motor. You're gonna take things slow and as easy as you can to prolong the life of that engine. Eating excessive carbs, even the so-called healthy carbs, is like redlining your pancreas. So this is why we are so unique from one another. Most diabetics have a combination of issues at different degrees requiring a tailored healthcare plan and most importantly, a really good doctor by your side who understands diabetes and knows your specific requirements. So what ultimately needs to take place? If you're a type two diabetic, your beta cells need rest. If you are lucky and they are not damaged and you've caught this early enough and most importantly you're taking the reins of diet changes i.e. controlling your carbohydrates that will allow the beta cells to reestablish themselves over time. Second, the removal of all the fats stored in the muscle, the liver and around the organs have to be reversed and or removed and at the same time never stored in the first place. So how do we do that? First, through our diets. Carbs, especially the densely packed carbs, both the good and the bad, have to be limited. Since you've been following me, and I know you are, you already know the details of this very important point, and you know how to initiate that game plan. Second, 
Exercise. No amounts of physical activity can overcome an excessive carbohydrate intake, especially for diabetics. Second, upon diagnosis, one has to account for the impaired pancreatic functioning as we've just discussed, thus low insulin output. Remember, exercise is a stressor, depending on the exercise, the duration, and the intensity, meaning the body will release stress hormones, driving up blood glucose, thus the need for insulin to bring those numbers down. But as you now know, because there are some significant resistance and or poor insulin production issues, strenuous exercise can initially work against you. There is simply not enough insulin to counterreact the negative regulatory hormones. In my case, since I have no pancreatic functioning, my blood sugars will skyrocket after exercise. So the need for a, both a basal and a bolus insulin is mandatory. So what is one of the important take home messages? If one is going to start an exercise program at first, keep it to a very, very light and easy, brisk, gentle walk if possible. So now that you know how diabetes physiologically occurs, how does physical activity aid in both the reversal and the maintenance of a healthy diabetic? Once one is able to initiate physical activity, the body will start to oxidize or use those fats in the muscle for a source of direct energy. This then over time frees up those muscle cells to normalize and start the process of taking up glucose for storage out of the bloodstream. As those fats start to be used for energy inside the muscle, this then increases the muscle cells sensitivity to insulin, which then in turn creates an environment where the pancreas does not have to work so hard because sensitivity is returning. Thus, less insulin production is needed. In the case of us insulin dependent diabetics, we can tell you firsthand, we need substantially less insulin on the days we exercise and on the days we do not. The less insulin that is needed, the less inflammation inside our bodies, the healthier we become. This is again why it's so critical to have a really good doctor, especially an endocrinologist by your side when lifestyle changes occur because what may happen initially is the need for insulin therapy. So insulin, usually a basal insulin is given, which allows for both glucose control and at the same time, the beta cells to rest, which over time may come back for a type two diabetic. I'll create that all important playlist for you on more videos related to blood sugar control and the foods we as diabetics can either eat or drink. In the list, I want you to start with vegetables for diabetics, top three picks. What are the best vegetables for diabetics? I'll not only give you my three top picks, but more importantly, the criteria used to determine that list. Should we as diabetics snack? How does snacking affect the recovery and or the stress placed on the pancreas? Look to the episode, Can Diabetics Eat Popcorn to learn more? What about those quote unquote healthy good carbs our experts recommend, like oats and sweet potatoes? you will know what are my go-to everyday staple of carbohydrate sources that easily keep my blood sugars low and controlled, thus an A1C in the mid to low fives, but most importantly, keep me strong and energetic all day long. If you're on a desktop or laptop, I want you to use your mouse to click that box. If you're on your mobile device, tap that with your fingers. The first is the link to subscribe to this all-important channel. The second is the link to that all-important playlist mentioned on foods. So I want you to have a great and productive day and we will see you soon with another episode which I said are always released weekly. Bye for now.